Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I'm here to help you navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. I started dating uh, at 50 after I'd been widowed and waited about 14 months to go online. And at the time, I was pretty optimistic. I thought that the men would be looking for a good woman, as I was looking for a good man, to, to form a new life together. But I soon discovered that wasn't the case. In fact, I discovered that the biggest problem with dating at middle age was that most of these guys were living in the past. In fact, one fellow opened our date with the line, I realized I was so excited to meet you because you're not divorced, so you're not broken like the rest of us. Broken like the rest of us. That's a pretty low bar, and I pity someone who thinks that everybody divorced is broken. But I discovered that I wasn't alone um, in, in finding men like this. A lot of my girlfriends said the same thing. I kept meeting guys who would go through their own histories. At the end of the date, I would know a guy's history that was financial, uh, marital, sometimes sexual, which I really didn't want to know, but they didn't know much about me except that I was a lawyer from a long marriage. And I always worked in that I was a lawyer, so they knew I had a professional career other than sounding board. Uh, one guy went on about this little hottie he'd moved in with who took advantage of him for rent and how, how um, terrible that was. So I learned that he was pretty much finished and I was gonna get nothing but resentment. Uh, one of my first dates uh, after I went online was with this great looking guy, Alec Baldwin lookalike. We go to a romantic dinner and he treats me to the story of not one, but five women who had disappointed him, including this incredibly hot blonde with breast implants, good for her, but I didn't need to know about it, who had essentially ruined his life. That's how he chose to spend our dinner date. So ultimately I started to feel like I wasn't so much a dating candidate as I was a therapist. What was I, what was I doing there? Um, and why weren't these folks living now? And why weren't they happy to be with me? And I finally realized that when they looked at me, they didn't see my face. It looked like I was wearing a mask of one of their exes. And they were trying to tell, to speak, almost to speak to, to her through me and what all the problems were. And that I was the therapist to say, yeah, that was okay. You know, this was, this was terrible, but, but, but you're okay. It all felt like a power struggle. What would I put up with? Because, you know, when these guys didn't have any hope and all they broadcast was weariness, they weren't putting much effort in. So I'd get dates like, hey, when were you going to be in my area? I don't make it out to your hometown very much. Or I'm at my local bar at 8 o'clock now. You want to stop by? And the answer was no. And I wanted somebody who was happy to meet me. And I wish what I had done in retrospect, two things, two things. First, I wish I'd ended a lot of these dates much, much sooner. I should have had about a half hour margin, at which point I would say, well, okay, I've learned a lot about you, but you haven't asked me anything about me. And the other thing I did do, which helped, was that I made my dating profile very specific. I said that I was a traditional woman looking for an old fashioned gentleman for a long term commitment, and that was all I wanted. And that if anybody was looking for something more short term or sexually adventurous, I admired their self knowledge, but they shouldn't be wasting their time on me. And that helped because a lot of these folks who weren't living in the present didn't want to put a lot of effort in. So I wanted to sound really high maintenance. You know, with the pandemic, I'm hoping a lot of this will change because we've been stuck inside and we've been lonely. And maybe we've come to appreciate, even with dating online, that meeting new privilege, meeting new people is a privilege. It isn't a burden. And if, it's a, if it is a burden, you shouldn't be doing it. But the option of meeting new people in person should be something we're looking forward to and looking for fresh starts, especially after we've been all been cooped up so long. But when we are reemerging, the best thing we can do now is stop putting our energies towards those guys who are living in the past. Simple answers. Hey, I think I'll leave now. I've heard about two women who broke in your heart. I, I really don't want to hear about the other three. Um, 
you know, I'm thrilled about hearing about all your exes for a half hour, but I've got to go. Or, you know, no, I don't want to, or after, even after a decent coffee date, I've gotten a couple of these calls. Do I want to come over? The answer is no, I don't want to come over. I just met you today and that is creepy. So my best advice for you is to look for those folks who only are talking about their pasts. And if you can't engage them or have them be engaged with you, then it's time to go. We need to limit our time with the toxically jaded. I'm Debbie, and I hope this helped you with the cesspool that is dating at middle age. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.